What's up? What is good, people? It's Sia here. Welcome back to the channel. I just finished my eight kilometer run. It was an easy pace. And today it was a very much challenging one. When I started it, I didn't want to really go and run. It wasn't like those other days where I don't feel like I want to run. And then during the workout, I just feel much more good and better. Today it was, it was the same mood the whole time. I just wanted to just quit. But I couldn't just quit because I know also I made a promise to Rick that we need to do also now a handstand push-up uh, drill where he's going to be coaching me. So this content today is going to also help you if you want to be able to do a handstand push-up. We're going to take you from A and take you all the way to Z. But I don't know all the technicals and everything. Rick is the man that is going to be taking you through everything. So let's go see Rick. Cheers. What's up? What's up, Rick? What's up, man? How are you good? doing? I'm good, my man. brother. I'm ready. Champing. Yeah, the run was Tough one challenging. Today. Yeah, it was really challenging. But yeah, I couldn't miss this thing because it was Yeah, man, you made an appointment. Eh? Exactly. <laughs> we have to keep keep the word, right? Good, good. <laughs> so good. yeah, what uh, what are we, we going to be doing today? So um, obviously, I picked up you needing so a little bit of help with your handstands, yeah, uh, yeah, the handstand yeah. push up. So yeah. what I what I can help you with is obviously going from a beginner kind of basic movement, how to develop the movement all the way up into the full RX movement, being a okay. lot more efficient, which is gonna help you get through workouts much easier. Okay, that's, that's okay. proper, because yeah, I saw the comment that you you, you pinned on the, on the story saying, I need to put more power from the hip and all yeah. that. I was like, okay, cool, yeah. I'm up for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, need a, I need a bucket with some chalk in it. Let's do this. So, first things first, when we do a handstand, so what we're trying to achieve is getting a triangle base. When we are up on our, on our head, resting on the floor, that our hands are in front of us. So that that triangle is going from my hands as a base onto my head, which is balancing me. And what I'll show you just now is we can kind of balance without the wall. Then what we're gonna do is while your head is down here, we're gonna rest your hips on the wall, creating a really solid base so it's not causing any pressure on the arms. Okay. That'll allow you to move your legs freely and do the kip and use your hips properly. Where, where, where there's, a, there's a dot, that's my right hand and this my left hand. And, and then your head is gonna go there. It's oh. forming a bit of a triangular base. So we're gonna drop onto our head there. Yeah. Now what's gonna happen, I want you to kick up against the wall. All right. Okay, and if you come here nice and close, sorry, I just shocked you. Okay, so what, what you're gonna see is with him, hips on the wall, okay? There are four points of balance, okay? So his hands, his head, and his hips against the wall. This allows you to, all I want you to do is just extend your legs slowly. Allows him to move freely, bring your knees down to your chest, all the way down without pulling him off the wall. Okay, so if you see, come down. Okay, what we're trying to achieve with triangular base is trying to alleviate any sort of weight on your arms in the movement. Yeah. So that when they lock out, there's not too much pressure on the arms and they're able to move. We're gonna start off a little bit higher. Your head is gonna be here, yeah. just off the wall, and your hands are going to be a little bit further back, creating that triangle again. Yeah. You're pushing from a little bit more of a shallow position. We're gonna bring the knees all the way into the chest, okay. and I want you to extend those hips as hard as possible and straighten the legs. Okay. okay. Right, cool. Go for it. Do, do my fingers point forward or on the sides? Okay, good question. If you've got good, great mobility, your fingers can face forwards. Most people don't have great mobility, so personally, I am kind of in between. I don't have my hands forward and I don't have them completely to the side. I kind of have like oh. halfway between them. All right, so my thumbs face a little bit more towards the wall, but you can try and see which is more comfortable for you. And widen your, widen your fingertips. Okay, remember we want as much balance on our fingertips and this also goes for handstand walks as well. Okay. All right, let's go. All right, so you see now that your legs are kind of free to move. Yeah. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring your, your knees down into your chest, we're gonna load those hips up and I want you to extend legs and your hips fully and press those arms up, drive. Good, and I want a little bit more explosive. Okay. Now when you come back down, bring your head forward, okay? All right, knees down and big drive, drive. 
There we go. See how you use those hips there? Okay, cool. Much All easier, right? right? Okay, now, a little bit of a problem, normal thing. So if you just come a little bit closer, if you can see, hands, head, all in one line. Okay, so you've gone off of that triangle. So come down. So you've gone off the triangular base, which loads up the arms because I can't balance if my hands are in the same line as my head. So when you are coming off the wall, you are locked out here. You must kind of bring your head a little bit back so you are behind your hands. All right, okay, so, so you get back forward. into this position, all right. Oh, not here. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I see. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. Okay, kick up, nice and hard. Hips against the wall, and what the hips do is they just offer you a little bit more of that support, nice and explosive, drive. Okay, when you come back down, we're gonna push head back. There we go, perfect. And knees down and drive. Good, all right. So, what we're trying to, just jump up for two seconds, I'm not gonna make you do too many reps. Okay, so, what we're trying to do, if you have a look here, is with the triangular base and our hips leaning against the wall, when we drive, we're, we're, we're technically leaning into the wall with yeah. our body. So All right. Drive, drive this way. Well, you're going to drive straight up, but the fact that you're leaning into the wall, yeah. you are going to come back to the wall. Okay. All right. So, what thing to remember is your feet don't slide very easy on a wall. So now, if you drive into the wall and try and drag your feet up, more. it's going to cause a lot of friction, and you're going to be pressing a lot more with your arms. Okay. okay. You're ready to try a little bit of a... So you want to be fully extended while as your, 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 your heels are not on the wall yet. You want to be on the yeah, wall when you... Yeah, you want to kind of extend without any friction. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, because when, when like my leg, my, my, my heel are touching here and I'm still like halfway to my extension, it feels more heavy. Like it's dragging and yes, you have to yes. kind of press through. Exactly. Shall we increase to a little bit of a tougher, tougher standard? So what's going to happen... We're gonna keep the hand positioned. Our head is gonna be a little bit further back. Okay. Heels down. Heels down, knees, and big drive up. There we go. See how we lock out immediately? Yeah. Okay, come back. Further back, further back. There we go. Good work, much better, hey? Yeah. And you see how it's less effort, which... A, a great balance, because most of the time, when I come down, I'll literally fall back. Yeah. So, with my hands uh, further away from my, from my head, it gives me a good balance when my legs are trying to fall off. Yeah. I kind of have that good ability to, yeah. to activate my Stabilize, yeah. And yeah. Then go back again. Yeah. yeah. But that's good, man. Yeah. How's it feeling? Good. It's okay. better. It's better than normal because sometimes when I do it, I'll feel more tired faster. Let's go, let's go back to the original one. And then what we're going to do is just go back to some drills that can actually, um, that can help you develop this movement. Okay, a lot of these movements are developed by breaking the movement down and practicing elements of the movement like the hip drive. Okay. Most people don't know it or the timing of the press. Because the one thing is you drive with the legs, but you're already pressing with the arms. So you're making it a lot heavier on yourself. So it's just a good idea to practice that timing and that position, also building a little bit of the strength in the same plane. Now I've learned that I need to drive my knees all the way towards my chest and expose my hip more so that I can have more uh, explosiveness when I go up and it, it makes a lot of difference. So yeah, let's go. Okay. One common problem as well, yeah. is kind of getting too comfortable with loading up the hips. So come down again. If you overload those hips, you might change your center of gravity to pull you off the wall. And when you drive, yeah. like you did earlier, you were driving yourself away from the wall. Yeah. Okay, so bring your knees down, don't overload, and shoot them straight up. Drive. Yeah. 
there we go. Good position, good triangle base and drive. All right, that was really good by the way. Yeah, well done. that was nice. Good job. <laughs> okay, so what we start seeing is guys start getting the movement, but now you're five rounds into a workout and your hip drive is not super explosive and your arms aren't locking out super, super explosive, you start pressing too much with the arms and that fatigues you and then you start failing reps. Okay, okay so the idea is to keep every single rep exactly the same as explosive as possible. And the whole idea of being efficient is to not overwork the shoulders, especially in this movement. Okay. okay, don't overwork any part of the body that's gonna cause you to fail the movement. All right, there's two drills that I really want you to practice. It's gonna help you with the explosiveness of the hips. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lie down on your, on your back here with your feet facing the wall. Okay, and put your heels there. Okay. Sorry, I keep shocking you. Yeah. All right. Okay, now what's gonna happen is you're going to load the hips up exactly the same. You're gonna pull the knees back into the hip, into the chest. Yeah. And what you're gonna do is you see you're loading your hips up exactly the same. Yeah. Now I want you to drive your legs as hard as possible, straighten up your hips and shoot your feet up onto the okay. wall. Okay. okay cool. So load the hips up and drive. Good. More explosive, okay. more explosive. Get aggressive, try and kick my wall down. Okay, <laughs> knees, knees back and drive. Good, more, 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 more. Okay, knees back, drive. That's it. Now see what we're doing? We're loading the hips and we're extending them. Yeah. We're loading the hips and extending them. Okay, cool. cool. So what we're doing is we're, we're practicing the hip motion that you're doing there, that hip drive or the drive of the legs that's initiated from the hips extending. All right. Okay, and what we're doing is we're just developing that power by being more and more explosive. Okay, so when I say go, I want you to go. Ready, and go. Good. Ready, go. Good. All right, ready, and go. That's it, more, 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 more. Okay, and go. That's it. Last one, go. Perfect, okay, cool. Next drill we're gonna play around with. Okay, so a very cool little one actually. I'm gonna demonstrate for you. Okay. Like I said earlier, a lot of people, when they're first doing this, the problem is they learn the, they learn the movement. They've got the base, perfect. They've got a lot of balance. Then they've got the hip motion that they nail and they're nice and explosive. Okay. The problem is they start pressing too early or too late or too slow. So that timing from driving with the hips, okay, into the press, because to make us weightless, you have to wait till the end of the drive when you're as, as much extended as possible, and then press and lock out with the arms. Oh, so okay. you start from the midsection, then you yes. on with your yes. arms. Yes, always okay. from the most powerful joint, which is going to be our hips. Yeah. So how we actually develop this movement is we wanna mimic exactly the right same position. When you're holding your body weight, and you come down and you've got your whole body weight to deal with. It causes a lot of pressure, which causes you to not do the movement properly okay. and to revert back to old movement patterns, which is what we're trying to break away from. Okay, right. so what we're gonna do is we're going to add a little bit of weight, don't go too heavy. Okay, this is my hips fully extended. Yeah. So what I need to do is create that little kind of hinge, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice extending the hips into the press. Right. So developing a little bit of power and a quick lockout. Okay. okay, so we're gonna dip here, and when I squeeze my glutes, I'm gonna extend nicely and press. Okay, right, cool. and it's there. Uh -huh. Okay, dip, drop. Okay, and it's all initiated from the hips. From the hip. What you wanna get away from is in the drive, pressing before I've extended. So you extend first and then you carry on. Yeah, you momentum. use the momentum. Oh, so it moves like this. Yeah, okay. and I don't want to extend and then slowly press either. You want to use the momentum. Okay, cool. So we're going to get nice and explosive. You're going to give it a try? Yeah. I'm going to see how it goes. Now you want to use enough weight so you can feel the weight, but not too much weight that you're sitting pressing slowly. Okay, yeah. we're using 210 kilos here it's actually quite a nice way to feel the movement and feel what the hips are doing. So come up into an upright position. 
Okay, then I want you to sit back, hips back, and drive. Good, more power. Again, I don't want to see that, I don't want to see that weight in your arms, okay. Drive. Good, hips first. And drive. So those are two really, really cool drills. I'm gonna go grab a box so we can just demonstrate one of the other movements that help with a little bit of strength. We're gonna do some pike push-ups. They are really tough. Um, I want you to come into a push-up position with your toes on, on the box. Walk up to where your hips are increased and you're about 90 degrees. There we go. Okay, what this is gonna do is it's gonna mimic the handstand position, okay? And we're gonna go forward. Remember, your head goes more forward than your arms. And come up. Press. Good. Come down. And press. Good. Down. And press. Okay, come down. All right. Okay, up. All right, give it a rest. So you can do the same thing on the floor. So I want you to get into a push-up position, normal push-up. Okay, and I want you to walk your hips up as high as possible. And you're going to mimic this kind of pike position. Okay, obviously helps with the flexibility as well. And you're gonna do the same push-up. Okay, go forward and up. Good, excellent. Give me one more, forward and up. Good, okay, give it a rest. So what basically we've gone through today is the very basics of kind of foot position, yeah. where you need, I mean your hand position, sorry, in relation to your head, using the wall to kind of balance you and allowing you to move and do that kipping handstand push-up. Okay, so what we did was we kind of scaled it for you quite a bit in the beginning where we loaded up the mats so that your head wasn't going all the way down to the ground and you weren't pressing from as deep a position, okay? We brought it down as your technique and your timing started to get better and you were nice and explosive, getting comfortable with the position, we could take the mats down to where you were doing it on basically a flat ground. Okay. okay. Which was really, really great, especially for the first kind of day that we've really started practicing this technique. Okay, from there, you look at being a little bit more efficient going forward, which we need to keep that explosive movement because it's not about doing one rep or two reps, it's about being able to do a few rounds of multiple reps. Right. If I gave you a five round workout with 15 handstand pushups in it, it's gonna get quite tough. Okay, yeah, especially cool. when your heart rate is up from doing other rowing or other burpees and that sort of stuff that also fatigue the shoulders, mm -hmm. you need to be efficient and you need to use your body to be able to do these movements, okay? okay. Now, where we go from there, we practice the movement, not by doing the movement, okay? We break it up. So we mimic the same hip movement that we did, that little hip drive drill yeah, the one on the I wall. On my back. Yeah. yeah. Then we mimic the timing, okay? Hinging of the hips, driving, reaching full extension of the hips. So we get everything we can out of the hips before we start pressing. Okay, those two drills together really, really, really develop the timing and the power in your hands and push-ups, making them more efficient. Okay, the last draw that we did is obviously just to develop a little bit of that strength. You do need the strength. Obviously, we're trying to avoid using the arms too much, but you still need the strength. So those kind of females or guys that haven't got strong shoulders to kind of press themselves up, it's a good idea to build up the strength as well. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. you should essentially be able to do a strict handstand push-up in theory, before you start doing kipping handstand push-ups. It is a better progression, you're strong enough, just like doing kipping pull-ups, you should be able to maybe do one or two strict pull-ups before you get into doing kipping pull-ups. Okay. okay, so developing the strength with the movement is also ideal. Okay, All right. how do you feel? I feel good, yeah? Good. Yeah, yeah, let's go. That's amazing, dude. What are we gonna do now? Okay, well, let's, let's put together, I'm not gonna help you. Do a little bit of workout. And let's do, um, Let's do something that's gonna make you a little bit tired. Okay, okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 10 dumbbell snatch into five handstand push-ups. We're gonna do three rounds and let's see how you, see how you maintain the technique. Okay, cool. And it's more about technique. I mean, we're not trying to kill you today, okay? Uh -huh. You've just done a last long run, but I'm gonna let this go. And then what I'm gonna do is give you a little bit of feedback on where you can improve and where we can get yeah. a bit better. And you're gonna tell me how you felt in the workout. Alternating dumbbell snatches. 
And what you're gonna find is with the movement, I'm gonna come and demonstrate there, you are obviously pulling with the legs and locking out with the arms, which is gonna tax the shoulders. So your efficiency there is gonna matter. We're going to alternate. Okay. okay. Alrighty, so 10 reps plus five handstand push-ups. 10 each side or no. five, five? Five, five, so it's gonna be alternating. So it's gonna be 10 in total, plus five handstand push-ups. Okay. okay. Try and keep that technique. Perfect. Woo! Nice work. That was good. Dude. That was good. Well done, well done, well done. Getting better all the time. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> My shoulders are dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. That was nice. So the more you become comfortable, the more yeah. you become faster and yeah. just do it effortlessly. Yeah. Okay, cool. This is, this is a very, very big sport. Yeah. It's a lot of technique. Okay, there's, there's lot. lots of different movements and there's so many small little tricks you can do. Okay, and you and I, we're gonna spend some time together, we're gonna yeah. go through them, make you more and more efficient that you can actually use your fitness.